This video is brought to you by TheConceptBay.net, hosted by yours truly. Learn how to make video games for mobile, websites, consoles, and desktop using many tools and engines. Join today to get access to exclusive game development live streams and learn the secrets of game development. Use the link in the description to find out more. Now, here is a chunk of news that, as a developer, I am super excited about. I have received an email today from Steam announcing a brand new feature built in right into Steam called Remote Play Together. It is a feature that will allow you to play offline co-op games and offline multiplayer games remotely with your friends over the internet. Here is an official email from Valve. Heads up developers, here comes Remote Play Together. We're reaching out to let you know about a new feature heading to Steam. Your local multiplayer games will soon be improved with automatic support for Remote Play Together on Steam. Remote Play Together is a new Steam feature that enables two or more players to enjoy local multiplayer games over the internet, together. We think this feature will be valuable for customers and developers and are excited about the beta, so this is coming out in the upcoming beta of Steam. We've provided frequently asked questions at the bottom of this message, which we think addresses most questions and concerns. All local multiplayer, local co-op and split-screen games will be automatically included in the Remote Play Together beta, which we plan to launch the week of October 21st. Here's how it works. Using the Remote Play Together beta, a player can simply launch any game with the support for local multiplayer, local co-op or shared split-screen features and then, via the Steam overlay, invite a friend to join their game for some multiplayer fun. The invitation is just like handing a second controller to a friend. When a friend accepts an invitation to play, it's as though they are playing side by side at the same machine, much like a traditionally split-screen experience. The host's computer is running the game, but with Remote Play Together, friends can join in using their own controllers, voice, audio and display, regardless of whether they own the game on Steam. Any controllers directly to the second player's computer will act as if they're plugged in directly into the first computer. The player hosting the game can also choose to allow or block inputs from the shared keyboard and mouse. Remote Play Together is built on top of Steam's existing Remote Play technologies and supports up to 4 players and renders 60 frames per second at the resolution of 1080p. The feature requires a connection between 10 and 30 megabits per second for a successful low latency session, with results depending upon the internet speeds of everyone playing. With a fast connection, additional players may be supported. No online features or servers required. This feature is designed to add value to multiplayer games which do not already have native online capabilities. It will soon be enjoyed among friends online using the Remote Play Together beta, enabling fans to introduce your local multiplayer game to new audiences. Note that multiplayer games which are not exactly designed for local play are still best played using games built-in online system. Coming soon to Steam beta near you! We look forward to bringing this new service to your local multiplayer games on Steam. If you have any questions, please reach out to Steam Team. A Remote Play Together beta will soon be announced to Steam players everywhere. Now, let's discuss this little announcement. I know that similar sort of solutions have already existed for this particular problem, however, the convenience factor of not having to install any third-party software to play local co-op and local multiplayer games will probably be a serious competitive problem for those third-party tools. Nothing beats having such functionality without having to install anything additional on your machine. Now, the final verdict will ultimately depend on the delivery and the quality of the experience. We'll just have to wait and see once the tool comes out. As a gamer, this might just bring the resurrection of the trend for local co-op genre games. When you look at games from back in 2012-2015, local co-op was very topical during the development. Many game developers valued couch gaming with friends, and those who didn't had split-screen multiplayer shoved down their throats by the investors. Split-screen co-op and local multiplayer was quote-unquote the shit at the time according to market researchers and that's why every game had to have it, be it poorly or well implemented. At the time, this is where the public interest lay and this is, in my opinion, where my personal golden age of gaming resided. 
I lived not too far from my friend's house and we'd get together to play co-op games like Nazi Zombies very often. In fact, you can find many of those recordings on our mutual YouTube channel called Retroactive Gamers. So that's local co-op. Then something changed in the currents of trends. Due to the booming popularity of games like Call of Duty and Battlefield, online multiplayer started taking over. We saw less and less co-op games being released, especially co-op story mode games. Everything started going into the world of matches and tournaments, battle royale and survival multiplayer. The co-op scene started to fade more and more into the obscurity and was really only maybe still supported by the indie dev community. And thus my personal dark age of gaming had begun. I think co-op games that you play while sitting next to your friends have an irreplaceable experience that online play simply can't replicate. And this was around the time when I started getting interested in making co-op games myself. As a game developer, this feature can potentially offer some even greater benefits, which the gaming community will ultimately also benefit from. So let me explain. In the last few years, I've been greatly invested in crafting experiences that twist, test and ultimately strengthen friendships. I'm talking about co-op games that are fun to play with your friends side by side. But in the current age of online only co-op and multiplayer games, it's hard to battle the convenience factor of not having to bus or drive to your friend's place to play a game. And thus, if you wanted to develop co-op experiences, you had to learn about netcode. Oh yes, I get shivers down my spine just from uttering the term alone. Netcode is the thorn in my side, my personal ball and chain, and ultimately the biggest problem when it comes to creating an online co-op game. First problem, when coding a network enabled game, meaning the game two or more players can play over the internet, you are almost coding two separate games. You need a server and a client. Sometimes you can combine the two together, but code wise, you're still coding lots and lots of interactions between players. When coding a network game, the fundamental approach to how you code many events, characters and mechanics will change from if you were to code a single player or a local local co-op game. You will not only have to code the events and mechanics, but also the mediator who will ensure that these events and mechanics are synchronized across all players. This is of course the server. Here's an example of what you might have to code for a basic player movement system. Suppose that you let the server handle all the movement for you. Okay, players press the move key, which is sent to the server. The server moves that player, then takes that player position and sends it back to the client. At this point, the client, when receiving the position, updates the position of its own player object in the world. But wait, it's an online game, so there's gotta be other players. So the server has to now collect data from all the players, assemble it into one single packet, and send that packet to all the other players, at which point you're gonna have to code the client to sort through the data and update all the positions of all the other players and yourself. Now suppose there's NPCs in the game. Friend or foe, if you could shoot it, player shoot command is sent to the server, then it calculates the trajectory and the hit of the shot, calculates the result and sends it back to the client. But wait, this NPC drops loot, so now the server has to create some random loot and has to update all the clients about the sort of loot that the NPC just dropped. And the clients, being greedy humans, all dash for the loot at the same time and all step on the collision box, in which the server has to now sort through and see which player got there first and send that player the data about the loot they got. But wait, that loot is not going to be on the player's machine, that loot is staying in the server machine. So now we got to synchronize inventory, because you can't let the client handle inventory, otherwise the clients can always cheat. Oh my god, we've barely covered shooting and loot pickup and my head is about to explode. Okay, look. I've dabbled with netcode enough to know that it's not really difficult, but it's really time consuming. For open online games, as in open games, open world games where anybody can drop into the game at will, you can basically add things like cheat prevention, lag compensation and server hosting and maintenance, mind you. And you can see that even for simply wanting to implement co-op experiences in this modern day and age means fundamentally changing the core programming ideology of your game. 
And this is why the Steam feature here is so appealing to me as a developer. If it's anywhere close to what a local co-op game experiences can offer, that means that I no longer have to worry about netcode. I can program my game like any single player experience, which I have to tell you is magnitude simpler than dabbling with netcode. You press the button, I move the character. You shoot your friend, I create a bullet. And if it hits the player hitbox, I deduct from his health variable. Simple, neat, low cost approach to making the game. Especially as a single crewman developer, I have to consider what could I be doing with my time. This is a subject that I've touched on a bit closer in a video titled, how many games can you make before you die? All that netcode I have to write would essentially still amount to the same exact experience as a local co-op game, but at a labor cost of 10 to 20 times. In many cases, as a single developer, it's just not worth of the investment for my labor and time. This is why the Remote Play Together feature is so appealing to me. It's an extra feature with no extra labor. Net gaming without netcode. And in the modern age, many of us who can't afford gaming have high-speed internet connections. So I'm thinking that gamepad latency and video delay should not be that much of a problem. Of course, we'll have to wait and see. In this case, as a gamer, you'd be sacrificing visual fidelity as a compensation in order to gain the perk of playing an offline co-op game over the internet with your friends. I'm gonna say that I have a good feeling about this and this may as well bring back the era of co-op campaign gaming. Netcode is a difficult subject for many developers to handle and to be honest I think this is gonna open up a lot of doors for making online co-op games which would otherwise have required the developer to very quite intimately engage with networking code. On the side note, every developer ditching Steam for that sweet sweet epic store exclusive title due to higher revenue shares just might consider that their commitments to the competitor might have been premature as Steam would be the first and only store to offer this feature built right into the storefront, which would offer the developers the option of skipping netcode entirely right at the conception of their game, thus saving a colossal chunk of money and man hours in the process which would have been spent developing the game in a fundamentally more taxing, time consuming and resource demanding way. So it looks like Steam is getting competitive and for me as a developer who is interested in creating more co-op experiences, this is a big fat bonus to sticking with Steam as a distributor. In any case, leave your comments about this feature down below and we shall see where this discussion takes us. Thanks everybody for joining me today and I hope that you've learned something.